Tu vas mettre pas non plus. Allô? Good afternoon. And so we're just about to begin the last um, block or session of our two-day symposium. Thank you for sticking with us. Um, so now I'm um, thrilled, excited um, um, to welcome Lorraine Basque and Rashid Ouramdan, um, both artists working uh, respectively in New York, Philly, New York, um, on the East Coast, and uh, Paris, um, and elsewhere in France, I mean, in many places, uh, but based in Paris uh, at the moment. Um, I guess I just wanted to say that uh, Rachid and Lorraine have actually never met. Um, I wanted to make that public, a public statement. <laughs> Just to, because, you know, the three other dialogues uh, or provocations we've had so far um, kind of exposed uh, a lot of um, intimacy or, you know, long relationships. Um, and this will be a, a different experience for you both. So I want to thank you for um, uh, engaging in that. And, and also to say that uh, I think if we want to jump in, if you have questions or comments, th these will be welcomed as well. So anyway... Um, maybe the second thing I want to say is that um, there was a little prompt um, for this exchange about the question of infrastructure or um, thinking from an artist perspective or your work um, in artistic fields, how um, you approach uh, the question of creating relationships, networks, uh, working in institutions or across institutions. Um, so that was part of the prompt, so I wanted to also share it uh, with you out there. Thank you. Thank you, Noemi. Um, yeah, oh. you want to start? Uh, sure, I can, I can start. Hello, again. <laughs> nice <laughs> to meet you, Laura. It's nice to meet you, Rashid. Thank you, Noemi, for this introduction um, and prompt. I. So I, I, I wrote some, some notes, um, and I will say um, I'm going to make my way to, in, to the question of infrastructure, but um, I feel there are a few words that I, that I have to speak um, before I could say other words, um, and I'm kind of inspired today by, um, by Audre Lorde, um, who challenges us to transform silence into language and action. Um, and also by Dorothee's invocation earlier um, when she reminded us of um, 1994 and the beginning of the Rwandan genocide. And she said, what were people doing? Um, so the words that I have to say are cease fire now and the occupation. Free Palestine. And I speak these words in chorus with many others. And I speak them so that they might continue to ignite a chorus that is um, louder than we could imagine until Palestine is free. And I, and I want to situate them now on this question of infrastructure um, because I don't speak them lightly, but with like the urgency of this catastrophic ethical moment. Um, infrastructure is the work that keeps things going. And I'm sure we've all been involved in the infrastructures of keeping dance going um, in studios, in theaters, in universities. Sometimes infrastructure are also the ways we organize with each other to interrupt business as usual or to interrupt the flow of things as they already are. Um, and we're seeing these interruptions happen right now. So last night I sat in the sanctuary of St. Mark's Church where Dance Space Project is, where I've performed and so many others here have performed, where I've seen so many work. I sat there in an event hosted by the Poetry Project um, called Poets for Palestine. And 600 people registered for this event. Um, 
five, around more than 500 people were in the sanctuary, but I wanted to share that I hadn't had this experience entering dance space, entering St. Mark's Church, entering the Poetry Project before, where um, the Poetry Project had actually received so many threats for hosting this event that they needed to hire security. Um, so for all of us to enter the building for a poetry reading, um, we, were, we were patted down and our bags were checked to make sure that um, violence would not occur. I also read today that um, David Velasco, the editor of Art Forum, who is a writer of dance, a thinker with dance, a lover of dance, um, was fired from his position as editor-in-chief at Art Forum um, because Art Forum circulated a letter of thousands of artists calling for a ceasefire and standing with the Palestinian people. So I say this to just kind of situate myself in like these very hostile, this very hostile moment, this, this moment that like, as the poet Benjamin Krusling said last night, we have to make the world safe for life. The world is not safe for life right now. And um, it, it touches us here, like it really does. Um, and this hostility of, of institutions, of the kind of state violence that creeps into institutions, it's not distributed, it's not distributed evenly. So, I, so now it's like, okay, very, very big. Very, very catastrophic, um, but we try, I try um, to, to say like, yes, I take up this task with all of you, um, how to continue to make the world, as Ben Kruslick said, to make the world safe for human life. And part of that is infrastructure. Like we work together to produce other kinds of environments for performance, for dance, for, the collective study that performance invites us into. Um, so I, now I will humbly shift, no, maybe I'll just pause, pause there. Um, maybe I'll pause there, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, first, I apologize for my English. Sometimes I even wonder myself if I understand everything you just say, but I think so. Um, no, but what you say made me think about the relation of domination that sometimes infrastructure can reproduce. And I would say that at the moment, the main focus for people who had the power to act in uh, our infrastructure is to be sure that we don't reproduce the same that we don't reproduce the same references, the same models. It's easy to say, because sometimes people are convinced that they are doing this, but they don't even realize that they are so much involved in an infrastructure that works well, that they don't see any more the alternatives. I would like to speak a bit of my experience as an artist, not as a director, but when I start to dance, I studied in a school, quite a recognized a school in French, the National Choreographic Center of Angers. I studied in New York a lot, and I have all this postmodern heritage. And, and I was working a lot in that field, this field called modern dance, and we were doing postmodern dance, and we were doing performances. And Every time, I w when I want, uh, and everything was really okay. And I have the feeling that I have the right references. Everything was going well. Until a moment when I, the first Gulf War happened. And suddenly, all this, that make rise a lot of debate between Western culture and Muslim culture, much more than before because uh, we had the conflict in Palestine from quite a long time, but no one cared about it. But when it became the war, uh, because of the petrol in the Kuwait, uh, suddenly it was a matter for everyone. And, um, and at that moment, I just remember how my daily life, the education I received, 
my non uh, my Ill illiterate parents, uh, refugees from the Algerian war, all that came back. And I decided to do a project based on that. And I Google, probably because of my artistic background, I first start with uh, Western culture heritage. And during this moment of war, I just wanted to reinvestigate the representation of deaths on stage. And I googled this title called The Young Men and the Deaths, this piece of Roland Petit, which was a hit after the Second World War. And the hypertextuality of uh, Google just gave me a lot of information. Everything that belonged to this artistic heritage and many other things, the collective suicide on the web, um, Marilyn Manson suspected to have influenced the the, the teenagers in the Columbine uh, mass murders, uh, the, um, the, 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 what, uh, the, the young Muslim kamikaze. And I did a project based on that. Um, and I don't know why, but I, I really used a lot of Oriental Arabic references, Arabic music, and even myself, uh, autobiographic fact from my childhood, things that I never use and that I never think that it could be relevant in my work as a dancer. And I also realized that when I start to, uh, to speak with the, uh, with the journalist, with the press, I start to say, but you know, you, the French, I was French and I never say that before, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so then I start to say, yeah, but you know, you in France, I never put a step in Algeria. I grew up in France. I don't even speak Arabic. But I just realized that how, during all those years, this cultural heritage that I got, my Algeria is from the French Alp in the suburb of the city, uh, how this was just smothered by a hyper well structured environment. Uh, and I couldn't complain. I mean, I was working with a lot of companies. And, but uh, and at that moment, and I did a project also based on that uh, later, I, uh, I went, uh, I learned later that my father had been tortured during the Algerian war. And that created a silence. I heard that you spoke about silence. Sorry, I was not here the day before. Then I don't know what you have said. I hope I will not repeat too many things you have said. Uh, but I also wanted to understand this silence because probably that this silence was part of the thing that I was missing, even if you are shaped by taboo, there is still things that are part of you, but that you don't ground your artistic um, approach on it. And let's say that this became more and more clear every year. And I would say that after all the thing, I think that's now the main responsibility that I have, not as an artist, but as a director, it's to be sure that our infrastructure don't reproduce dominant model because everything you mentioned was about domination of culture. And, um, and in the next panel, maybe we will explore more this detail uh, because I'm afraid to repeat myself. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, I don't know if we are going somewhere, but listening to you this morning, yeah. I, if we want to speak about our infrastructure, um, it's... Um, because it's easy to fight when you have a clear enemy. It's, uh, I have worked with a lot about uh, um, uh, Dorothée, she's one of the associated artists in Chaillot, uh, the theater uh, I have in charge, like many others. And I remember to have worked with um, Gilbert Gatore, who is a Rwanda uh, uh, writer. And I remember that he, he, he said that, you know, when you are a victim of someone that you understand the different opinion, you, it's easily to, to, to be against or to, to be in a conflict. But when you don't even realize, because everything is becoming implicit, what I said before, the strength of the reproduction of something because everything looks okay. Um, I think that's where uh, and, um, it's important to, to analyze the infrastructure and to be sure that we, in this nice river, we are sure that the current is not too strong and that we don't skip all the, um, the, the different things, the, the alternative way. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I think also that's part of what kind of prompted me in 
um, 2019 in um, collaboration um, with others, but to begin this project um, called the School for Temporary Liveness, um, which really kind of came out of maybe like a frustration with the ways that um, we are so like habituated um, in terms of our relationships to performance, whether we're watching a performance in a theater, even no matter how experimental it might be, we kind of come to it with, with our habits of assembly, um, as, as Fred Moten and Stefano Harney would say. Like, and, and then also in the university, frustrated with like the limits of what could be kind of transmitted in a classroom around experimentation. Um, and so working and teaching at um, the School of Dance um, at University of the Arts in Philadelphia with Donna Faye Birchfield, um, who was here earlier with us, um, we kind of dreamt up this idea to like have a school outside of school <laughs> um, to kind of exit the university in a sense, but we were still um, kind of tapping into its resources or legitimacy, let's say, to um, hack the resources of the university to create like a third space or a bridge space that would be temporary, um, a temporary assembly around experimental performance that really asked what if when Nora Chipomire comes and you know presents and performs her trilogy that has toured all over in theaters all over, how might we meet it differently if we're not meeting her as um, you know this a kind of provocateur, <laughs> incredible performer, which she is, but if we meet her in the sense of you are studying and we are studying with you. Um, and the work, for instance, that work in when it was presented and shared in the School for Temporary Liveness, um, it felt quite different than it had felt when it was in like the kitchen in New York. Um, and that has to do with this kind of experimenting and how we meet each other. Um, and so I think, yeah, with the kind of continued iterations of this project, the School for Temporary Liveness, I've been trying to think what are, what are the kind of like atmospheres that we can um, maybe project in order to be complicit with an artist's experimentation, complicit with blackness, black performance, complicit with queerness and queer performance. Like we are accomplices um, the institution or the theater does not represent an identity, but we are working together to produce like a social uh, kind of temporary collectivity. Um, and so the, the institutions that we know and that we love may, know, may, not, may, may only take us so far. Um, so really this kind of belief in um, and experimentation with infrastructure is what kind of carries this project or carries my, my work. But I wonder like how, I know you are speaking later about the Shio, but how as an artist in such a, you know, a, an institution that is really steeped in the city, is steeped in histories of dance, is steeped in a kind of maybe bureaucracy, like how do you how do you approach that work as an artist? Um, I would say um, it's an interesting thing. Uh, um, just uh, Chaillot was not led by an artist uh, those last years. It it was uh, it was in the past, but uh, those last 30, 20 years, twenty five years, it was not an artist, and they wanted an artist to be back. I don't know exactly why, but. Uh, <laughs> There is probably different reason, good reason, bad reason, but uh, no, but um, no, I would say I can speak more technically after about uh, Sheo, but still to try to be on this uh, uh, path uh, between those different responsibilities or just different experience of life, uh, of um, uh, paths in the art world. Um, no, I, w I would say that I'm trying to think the infrastructure to serve the project of the artist and not to ask the artist to bring a project that I need in the institution. Because, well, sorry, maybe you have mentioned, uh, speak about that, but this uh, market of art was so strong for many years and, and very efficient and very efficient. Um, 
uh, that creates habits. I recently meet some artists and they say, oh, okay, we did this new project, we would like to present it in your venue, etc., etc., which is totally valid, and the uh, Shayou is here for that. Um, but I think that, one more time, those alternative paths that uh, I was mentioning, you have, yeah, I think it's important to always consider your structure, even if it's concrete, even if it's a uh, Art Deco palace uh, like, uh, with venue, how we can support initiative or artists in the entire process. And often when you speak with the artists, th they don't speak only about their art pieces, but much more the new dialogue they invent with different communities, how they, they go beyond the art world. And um, I will give an example. Uh, in the nine uh, associated artists we have in Chayo, there is Faustin Linekula, which is from the uh, Republic Democratic of Congo. And um, he doesn't really want to do projects for stage or for museum at the moment. He's much more involved on, um, how to say, making emerge citizen in Republic Democratic of Congo uh, concern with cultural culture. Then it starts in a very, uh, it means to, to develop a place for that and it, it, it starts to create a, a place many years ago with partners called the Kabako Studio. And uh, at the moment, but the model was, the model was tricky because first time was well known enough in many countries, then he's able to travel, to perform, to make money, to bring back the money to the country. You know, it's really the model of a lot of uh, exiled people who go to work in the north and they send the money to the... And it starts to be in trouble a bit. I mean, I don't want to reduce uh, for, uh, I mean, for now. <laughs> I'm sure you would understand what I'm saying now, but that, uh, because he's, he critiques himself this uh, uh, way to, to behave. Then he said, no, I, now what I need from Shayo, it's not to come to perform the theater. I need you to help me to produce drinkable water in Rwanda, because doing that, I can sell the, the water, because there is a lot of firm who sell the water in a very high price, because during many years, the water had been polluted. Then they are able to produce water and to sell it in a cheaper price, because they don't want to make a massive profit. And with, the, with this benefit, they can develop a different program for the kids, uh, cultural program, uh, educa uh, popular educations. And then that's where he needs us to, to support. And Chayot is this uh, venue with different stage in Paris. But I do believe that as a national theater, that's the responsibility that Chayot have with many other countries, especially when there is a post-colonial heritage, etc. Then, then that's how I think uh, this infrastructure should be, because you are questioning. Then this is one example among many others to be sure that, what I said before, we do, just don't reproduce the same. We don't reproduce the next show of uh, Fasta Linecula, but we try to, to put the seeds of this kind of initiative where art is relevant in social field, in medical field, in research, in education, and um, yeah, that's it. I don't know if it makes sense, but. Um. Any, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you made me think about a project that we did uh, when you were talking about the water um, with this uh, amazing woman who started a charter school, but she wanted to start a dance program. And what she did was, because we wanted to also um, deal with uh, diabetes in the community, so she connected the school with the hospital and this dance program, what we did, we would bring the parents in on the weekends to do this work where we would like teach about nutrition and the kids would choreograph. But it was all, the school was connected to the hospital. And so this whole dance program changed the whole community eating habits. 
but it, it was the whole, coming up with the idea of creating a dance program that was connected to the community, the hospital. Yeah, I, I really think that's, well, Ali, I don't know what I will say in the next panel, but I, I, I go for it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I have the feeling that's still to think about infrastructure, that's, again, that's my later experience and that's why I'm trying to, to support. But um, I think that we have to, to act on the scale of the city and not on the scale of the outworld. And um, um, every t in the past, I worked with victims of torture with a project about the possibility to, to speak after that. But it was not, it was not only with them or not only with the, um, in the art world, because when you start to work on such a subject, you have to work with a psychologist that protect the victims. You have to work with different departments. Also, I've done a, a, a project called Crossing the Night with uh, what we call isolated minors, like uh, kids refugees uh, uh, alone in Europe and in France. And in every city where we arrived, the project was to federate uh, resources of the, of, of the city because you have to work with the justice department, you have to work with the school, you have to work with the family that's, for some of them, adopt them for a while. Sorry for the word, it's not adopt, but, uh, yeah. and, uh, but, and that's the artwork. This network of relation that you create in the city and, and how you make the demonstration every day that the dance practices, because I'm coming from dance, but I, I could say art practices, could have a value in all this domain. And suddenly, I remember judges, lawyers saying, oh, you're right, it's better that they spend some time with you instead of staying locked between them in the foyer where they have to, to, to wait, waiting for if they are going to have official paper or not. And, and just to have, create that dynamic, again, I think that's where, I always see our infrastructure as a transversal structure, really, Art for itself, I don't want to be provocative, I hope I will not shock you. Art for itself doesn't mean anything for me. I know that people claim that. Um, and I can understand why in the history of art they have claimed that. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, but yeah, that's it. And uh, this kind of initiative, definitely, that's uh, where maybe are the new resources, not the new resources, because Often when we say resources, we think money, we say, but uh, the new uh, raw, cru, raw in English, the, the, the raw element of life, uh, of, uh, of the real life become art uh, elements. And, so, uh, and I, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I would just like maybe highlight like attention or um, something I, I think about with infrastructure, which may be speaks to something I said earlier about like sometimes, you know, infrastructure, like with a city, we think of like the roads and the bridges and like everything that allows us to get from one place to another and all the work it takes to, main, to maintain those hospitals, schools. But then um, these very same kind of infrastructural institutions also continue to harbor like um, systems that like reproduce domination to you to use your language so I think there's like this tension when we're thinking about infrastructure is um, when we're in these kinds of like entanglements what do we want to keep going and what do we want to disentangle um, because yes like dance and performance um, you know I was thinking this morning about um, the work of Julie Tolentino and um, this, um, you know, party that um, they organized in New York and for ten years with a whole crew of um, queer women and dykes called the Click Club, um, and they were able to make the Click Club happen. This like space for people who were, um, you know, grieving from um, the AIDS crisis, um, who were activists. Um, but who also needed to gather, to dance, to um, kind of improvise and experiment with gender and sexuality and love and loss. And um, she was able to make that space, they were able to make that space because this whole part of the city was abandoned. 
by the, by the city. Like there was no infrastructure on, in the meatpacking district at that time. Um, it was abandoned and a choreographer's husband, I think had, you know, Julie was a dancer and a choreographer's husband had purchased the warehouse for like to ha have like jazz music <laughs> something events. And I don't think like that was really working or that like people were going to go to that. And Julie was like, well, I know what we could do with the space. <laughs> um, we could we could have memorials. We could um, have a party like no other party in the city. Um, and yeah, that that was possible because nothing else was there. And at, you know, eventually over the time that the party, um, you know, was happening for 10 years, like gentrification came in, the police came in, that whole part of the city changed, but there was this like window where something could happen. Um, so I feel like there's this tension with working with what's already been built up, but then also finding the gaps of where are the openings to to produce what's needed um, in a kind of moment um, that is unlike any other moment or, yeah. Yeah. Ashley, David, after. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ashley first. Uh, David, you were, you were pointing Ashley, right? Yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Rashid, thank you for bringing up Luan. Is that, that's the piece that you were referencing earlier a little bit? Is yeah, that true? One, one of the three. Um, and I'd love to call the name of the work into the room um, because it's, it feels deeply poignant at this moment. So if you don't know it, check it out. Um, and I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what I'm hearing is this relationality between individuals and their ideas and infrastructures or lack thereof. Um, and Rashid, you talked a little bit about what led you to make Luan. Uh, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about if, if and how making that work uh, shifted your relationship to larger infrastructures of company models, you know, making dances on many other bodies, um, as opposed to that solo work that you performed from such a personal place. And if there's a relationality there that you continued to hold, or uh, if it really does feel like a, a separate moment. Yeah, then Luan is one of the projects I mentioned, just for you, um, a, a brief pitch about it. Uh, then, yeah, um, following all those projects, um, well, how does it start? Ali, let's grab it. Yeah, I decided um, to follow the path that my father have done in what ex Indochina, which is Laos, Vietnam, and Cambodia today, uh, uh, that he did as a soldier because at the time Algeria was colonized and we were used to send colonized people to fight against colonized people to maintain the two colonies for the France. And uh, then he was one of the person who was uh, doing that. And then I wanted to scan the heritage uh, of this French, uh, the traces, I'll make it short, the traces of this uh, violence in, um, in this country. Because being there once, someone told me, oh, but you know, you, the French, the S colonial people. Then I say, uh, no, uh, yes, I'm French, but you know, my parents, etc. we don't care. <laughs> but, but yeah, how, how your identity is relative regarding the context you are. Then I did this project and I tried, uh, uh, in Luan, I just, um, yeah, I just realized how much during this project, one more time, how much a culture was a smothering another one. Then I will say the same thing. The only way I had to to approach Vietnamese culture was by reading uh, Duras, French writer. Um, and when when I start to meet the people, I, I remember I, I, at that time I, I met um, a captain from uh, a commando, uh, the commando army, uh, very close from Ho Chi Minh, and um, and I was really impressed because when I was interviewing him, every time he was speaking about nice French poets, uh, Rimbaud, Verlaine, like so, even like some texts that I didn't study at school, he was really high skill in French poetry, and uh, and he told me. Uh, we were fighting an, an occupant, not a culture. 
And uh, this um, complexity, diverse identity, fraternal war, uh, uh, conflictual feeling, conflictual domi cultural, uh, cultural reference that we all have here because we are all part of something. Um, let's say that's it's really something that I always have in mind, especially now. I cannot hear. For me, it's always uh, difficult to hear nations, to speak about people through nations. You know, when we say the Israeli, the Russian, the Ukrainian, like you always have, um, when the war starts in Ukraine, as a national institution, we all got, um, We, I suppose Catherine was the same in CND, we, we were all contacted to say, you have to stop all the relation with Russian artists. I mean, I was in contact with transgender artists. I was uh, people who wanted to escape from Russia. Then let's say that's definitely what I understood from all those artistic projects. It's that you always have a complexity. You always have com uh, opposition in those countries. And the worst thing is to put them in the same bag. And um, then that's it. And it's I don't want to go too far away about what's going on at the moment between the Hamas, Hezbollah, Liban, um, Palestine, Israel, but 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 what is important? Yeah, it's to face this complexity, and to never never reduce uh, someone to the nation that this person belongs to. Um, and yeah, that's maybe I don't know if we are going to speak about interculturality later, but uh, uh, interculturality doesn't mean internations, uh, and that's. Ors, and if I try to find finally a way to answer to the questions, too long, that's really the thing. That's um, our nation belonging is just a part of our identity, like our um, the gender, the, uh, the, our affective identities, etc., are so much more complex, and they, they built us so much. That's I think that's yeah, um, that's definitely how I think infrastructure should be. I, in Shayo, I don't speak about the National Dance Theater, even if it's an official label. I, I pretend to do a theater of diversity and hospitality. And after we see how we approach those two terms uh, every day. <laughs> I just wanted to bring up um, one other idea. I, I lived in the Middle East for six years at the NYU Abu Dhabi Art Center, um, and I wanted to just bring up the idea of infrastructure as privilege and the curiosity and, and opportunity that I had to use the infrastructure as a safe haven for dance artists, queer artists, and having the privilege of meeting artists who risk their lives to do dance in their home country, or as queer artists and curious for those of us that have the privilege to be around infrastructure, if we can use that. But it's not a Western idea. And the longer I live there, the more I realize that the more Western ideas we have about being out and being open about many things, many people across the world don't have that privilege. And so how can we in our conversations make sure that we're not putting judgment on a pathway, but as recognizing that we're all having to negotiate those things in our own spaces? Um, oh, I think I would just say like brief, briefly in response that um, I don't know if it's quite a response, but like what comes up for me is like, yeah, constantly being attuned to like, what is the kind of like structure or network of, or web of power that's in play at this particular moment in this particular place. And um, I just think that's what's kind of like informing anything I would say today is like being like, okay, what's what's happening with power right now? Um, and constantly having to kind of study that because it's changing at every moment and it's not ever um, fixed. Thank you. Uh, I just have one small 
Maybe it's not small. Um, the, maybe the, no, okay. Um, so when you think of these radical ideas and the concepts of infrastructure and shifting them and shifting the modalities of them, you're also dealing with these other larger power structures of support. And I'm curious what strategies, what thoughts, what dialogues are you having to help change um, the minds of others or to enlighten or whether there's any realization that there is a need to reimagine what that object of art is or how it manifests and how we can ch um, translate where the waters flow and how the waters flow. I mean, what can I say? I think that the thing that I like about thinking about infrastructure is that I feel like I think about, you know, I talked about a party, but like it's like a flyer that gets passed around or something. It's like a rumor. It's like the work that we do when we're kind of exchanging things between our hands. It brings us back to like the material scale um, of working together to like make something happen. And so, um, I often also think that um, when you put out the kind of like invitation to experiment, let's say, the people the people will come. <laughs> like like the poetry project put out poets for Palestine, and six hundred people came. You know, like when a need is there, then the people will come, and actually we all have so much to kind of um, give each other in those moments. So um, I think that it's. It's only in that kind of like hand-to-hand -hand passing of information that we start to shift the waters, that we start to shift the um, kind of institutional flows of power um, because um, we have to put pressure on institutions to change from, from underneath, from underneath. And when I um, kind of work with artists in something like the School for Temporary Liveness, my approach is not to say, is not to kind of structure their work or say, make your work fit this school. It's to say, no, your work already is a whole school. <laughs> like your work already has all this kind of pedagogy within it and it already um, has so much to kind of teach us how in the ways that we kind of meet each other outside of the structures that we already know can can something else happen? Can people gather in a different way around it? Um, and so I think I'm trying to always like trust that um, we already have everything we need, um, but there are structures that prevent us from like accessing it or sharing it or redistributing it. Um, and so I, 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 <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what it's like to run like a, major institution or something like that. Like, I just know how to be like, we have this room, we have this like $2,000. Like, what can we do um, together? What do, you, what do we need? Um, so that's kind of the, the approach that I'm working with, yeah. I hope I would understand you, Anne David, but uh, you know, um, working with those uh, extreme athletes in the, pro uh, the project we're having at the moment, I'm always working with people who will, and I think it's what I understand from them, every day they, they demonstrate to the people that we are wider than when we think. If you take a time to really work on yourself. And I think that the same for the institutions. Um, it's I would say, I don't know if uh, Catherine, because we have the two dance national institutions, uh, Catherine Sekin is from the Centre National de la Danse, we have the two national institutions, but actually, as often we say, institution, is, uh, and there is this movement, like if it's heavy, it could be very light. Uh, the, those kind of national institutions, we can behave the same way. You have space, and then you can do what you want with the space. Boss, it's, there is uh, you, uh, uh, there is things. Yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, I, I I like to play this way uh, when I have all those 
official uh, thing that you have to tell. But, but yeah, it's, there is always a way to play with that. You know, I like this French expression. We are, we are here for a mission de service public. Service public mission. We are here for a service. We don't, our power, it's to serve. Okay, and that's why we, we got the salary. We got the tip, the tip, they are the waiters. <laughs> but uh, no, but yeah, and uh, of course there is pressure, but, uh, but I think that we are not so far away from the, from the target that the people ask us to reach, which are very wide. Inclusion, to be sure that culture rich people that are not in contact with, like, and then there is uh, many, many uh, ways to do it. And, um, but it's, maybe I, I'm going back to what I said before. There is a model, the strengths of the model, sometimes you don't even think in another way, but uh, there is uh, a lot of possibility to gather, uh, to gather all other uh, infrastructure, and I think that's the only way. Because if you do the thing alone, with your institution, you will not uh, transform anything because it's what I said before. Um, me in Paris, for example, I don't see me alone in Chaillot. If I cannot work with CND, if I cannot work with Théâtre de la Ville, if, I, if we don't find in a kind of global ecosystem about who is doing what, how, the, we have a collective responsibility. Um, but it's true that we are not all in this philosophy. Some are very competitive, some are really... Uh, but, um, but we have this collective responsibility to share our practices and, um, and yeah, and just to be inspired about all this cooperation that we, that we can do. Uh, there is this phrase of Mark Twain uh, that I'm always using, you know, he said, I didn't, want, I didn't know it was impossible, then I did it. Uh, voilà, then it's a bit the same. We should not think that those institutions are heavy, that you can, no, take it as a, uh, as a, as a toy and shake it and, uh, and go deeply in inclusive uh, practices. You can create safe zone if there is not enough in Paris. Like, you j just play, play, play with it and, uh, and share, share that with other institutions. And I think the main goal is to, yeah, to go to this service for communities artist communities, uh, uh, but also all the others. And when you are on that field, I think that's, uh, uh, I mean, so far, it was not a big deal to federate people. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I feel it's my responsibility to uh, bring us to an end here, but um, I want to thank you both for sharing and, um, yeah, engaging and complexity. Yeah, amazing. So we will regather at, what, 2.15? Is that possible? What time is it now? Yeah, 2.15 for the last session. So we just have a few minutes um, to drink. And um, thank you.